They look good, but the scales will tell, won't they? I say little, he's not that little. You like that, didn't you? It was good, wasn't it? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a, another video. Don't mind all this stuff in the background. We're having a bit of a knocking up session. We're taking these apart and they're in the way at the minute. This is like where the maternity unit goes. So we're going to get them knocked up and then we can have the maternity unit in there. But it's too nice weather at the minute to uh, be doing that. We'll do that on a wet day. Today, we're going to go, well, the light's not come on. Today, we're going to be doing a bit of worming uh, of some young stock, worm and fluke. And we've got this Animec worm and fluke to uh, use on the young stock. The reason why we're doing them, we don't normally just blanket treat things, but we're going to do them because if you remember last year, we had a bit of an issue with cows going to slaughter that had fluke um, and it wasn't showing up on the tests. So we've decided to blanket treat everything again this year just to try and eradicate it from the herd. There's not really any worms about because it was such a dry summer, but fluke is something that probably will still be knocking around. So we're going to do that. Got this Animex Super from the guys at Pasture Tech at Burton on Trent, but they've got a place down in Wales as well and they will do all over the country. So well worth checking out. They're an awesome company. Starting to do a bit of work with them and they also sorted out my boluses for the cows, which is another job that we've got to do. The other good thing about this uh, injection is that it is um, about double concentrate compared to a lot of them. Although it seems more expensive per bottle, it actually works out a lot cheaper. We try and use different ones if we're going to use them subsequent years. Use a different one to what we used last year. I think we used Clozomectin so that you don't get any worm resistance. But I need to uh, work this out. We're going to weigh everything as well as it comes through and make sure that we give them the right dose. I think this is something like 10 mil or something like that per 25 kilos. Can't remember. I'll have to have a look. Actually, I lied. It's one mil for 50 kilos of body weight. It is injectable as well, not pour on. It works out a lot cheaper. A bit more work, but it's a lot cheaper. Now, the first group we're going to do is the heifers in the top yard up there, but we need to barricade across the yard. So I'm going to go and take the forklift and get the bale trailer. Dad's going to bring the straw shredder up to block up the gap just there, and then we'll run them down and get started. There is a few cool cows in this yard that are about ready to go. And there is also one heifer that's got a bit of a limp because the other day I'd gone up to, I think, Cal and Catless to get some bits and dad rang me up in a panic because one of the calves had got in the water trough and it's knocked its back leg a bit and it's just got a bit of a limp. It's not anything really wrong with it. It'll come right in time, but we'll take it back down there and maybe give it another jab of um, painkiller just to help it along. So poor thing's just got a little bit of a knock. <laughs> close to that bale. Those cool cows that are in there are pretty fit. So I'm gonna draft them out and stick them in this yard here. I'm also gonna weigh the cows. And annoyingly, our computer system doesn't weigh and worm at the same time. So it's really annoying to have to put it on there. I have to put the wormer on and then I have to write all the weights down and put them in afterwards. Thinking about moving systems, but we've not decided yet on what we're gonna go with. But um, yeah, something to mull over. If anyone uses a system they really like, especially in a beef situation, let us know. But I'm gonna write them down, draft those off, and then run the heifers back up the top.
So we've pulled these cool cows out of these heifers, which has actually made life a little bit easier because what we can now do is even the groups up. So we've ran 11 of the heifers out of the other group into the, what's left of this group. And it's made two nice groups actually. They'll be a lot easier to feed and it should make life a lot easier for us when we're managing them. Those cool cows as well are a bit handier just there by the crush because a lot of them are about ready to go. We can load them up a lot easier there as well. So we're gonna run this group back now and then we can finish worming the second lot of these heifers. Had a bit of a move around, brought the kit down to the bottom. Dad's just opening the gate over there, and we're going to weigh these bulls. I don't think we'll get the other half done, but we're going to weigh these guys, and these are the big half. And I'm really looking forward to see what them stabilizers are doing because they're in here as well. They look good, but the scales will tell, won't they? <laughs> Right, so I know what you want to know. How are they doing? They're actually doing really well. I'm really pleased with them. Just in general, across the whole board, the bigger ones, the little ones, they're all growing really good. They're not being overly pushed on the cereal and they're at that stage now where they're nine, 10 months old where I'm thinking about pushing them a little bit harder. The biggest one is in here and he's that one just sticking his head up there. The little sort of gingery colored one. I say little, he's not that little. He's 460 kilos, which is some going, 10 months old, 460 kilos, an absolute weapon. He's gaining uh, about two a day, which is awesome. Now, for Battle of the Breeds, back when we weighed these the first time, this beautiful boy just here, my stabilizer ball calf that I absolutely love. I think he's just gorgeous. And that one just there weighed near as damn it the same. That one was a couple of kilos heavier than the stabilizer, but you know, negligible. He's been in the shed a couple of weeks longer than the stabilizer and they still weigh near enough exactly the same. They're about 430 kilos. What I will say though, is I think personally that this guy, the Charolais Cross, is just like a bit, he's got a bit more frame about him. So it's like he's grown a lot more frame, but he's not got the muscle. This thing is just an absolute weapon. He's just solid. I mean, look at him. He's a beauty. He's just huge and I'm really impressed with him. As a rule, the stabilizers are putting on weight better and converting that feed better than the Charolais crosses are. And I know there's only five of them, so there's a bigger pool of the Charolais, but just in general, the trend on the stabilizers is most of them 
are over 400 kilos. I think the smallest one is just about 400. It's like 396 or something. Whereas some of the Charolais are, are quite a bit smaller than that. So I think it just goes to show that those stabilizers are just consistent across the board. I'm getting more and more impressed with them by the day. But what I will say is, I don't think the bulls are the impressive thing. So we'll go up the top and I'll, uh, I'll talk you through what I think is quite impressive. You liked that, didn't you? It was good, wasn't it? What I think is impressive is this. These stabilizer heifers. Because these heifers up here have just been getting fed uh, herbal lay silage. They've not had any concentrate yet. I'm about to introduce some concentrate into them just to get them moving now before turnout. But these stabilizer heifers are consistently miles heavier than the Charolais crosses. Come up here, if you look at these. Look, here's two of the heifers here. I know it's a little bit dark, but they're just real solid. They've got a nice covering on them. And there are a couple of Charolais that are holding up there with the stabilizers, but the top five performing cattle in this yard are the stabilizers. The top five performing heifers out of all the heifers are the stabilizers. And the top five heaviest are the stabilizers. What they are doing off of silage alone is blowing my mind. Now, if I just come in here, I'm hoping they're not gonna go too nuts. But you can see them, look, there's one. It's a solid lump of meat. Here's another one. Here's two more just here. They're just cracking. And then here's the other one just stood in the middle of there. That's the smallest one just there. And it's quite a lot younger than all of the others. But still top five heaviest. I'm absolutely gobsmacked by them. I really am. When I spoke to Seth about buying these stabilizers, he said to me what they would do and what they wouldn't do. And that's what drew them to me really because I just wanted someone to be honest with me and not promise me the world and deliver me only a half-hearted thing. They are smashing it. Absolutely loving them. So battle of the breeds at the minute, stabilizers are winning. Anyway, I'm off. Have a great weekend. I'll see you in a bit. Ta-da.